Uh, Dr. John Sennett. I'm an epidemiologist, infectious disease physician. I'm here with my medical student, Dr. Abu Malani, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about Omicron. We're going to try to give you some good news, and we're also going to tell you how to protect yourself during the holidays. So what would I tell you? Number one, it's not March 2020. I want to quote Victor Hugo, at the other end of the microscope is the telescope. If I take our focus off the minutiae of a micron and look at the overall picture of coronavirus, we have tremendous progress in prevention, treatment, and management. As far as vaccines go, the boosted mRNA vaccines are highly effective. We had great news today from Moderna, the boosting Moderna increases neutralizing ability, the ability to neutralize the virus 37 fold. Other good news is the Omicron hospitalization rates in South Africa and Great Britain are lower than with Delta. Finally, we have the ability of rapid diagnostics with home diagnostic testing available. A few caveats are, one, we don't know the effects on children. Two, we don't really understand what happens in unvaccinated people or in people that have previously had the illness. We don't think they'll be well protected. I want to make the point here that we're looking at a very dynamic situation. We have never seen this before. So we're giving you the best information. Ms. Milani and myself have gone through the data thoroughly today. We're trying to give you an up-to-date version, December 21, of what we know about Omicron and what to do about it. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is transmissibility. Again, this is very dynamic. We have never observed anything replicate so quickly. The doubling time in South Africa and in Great Britain is, um, is less than three days and almost two days. And that tells us that this is really going to move quickly through the population. Secondly, this agent can cause breakthrough infection. It's going to infect people that have been infected before. It's definitely going to affect people that have been vaccinated once. It's going to infect people vaccinated twice. And we can expect mild cases in people that have been boosted. Finally, an area of concern is how well the antibody infusions will work. In the test tube, they don't work great, but test tubes in humans are far different. So that data is not in yet. A caveat about that. Let's look at some of the data. First of all, it's moved incredibly quickly in the United States. 73% of new cases in the US are Omicron. That's how contagious it is. I have seen estimates ranging from three times as effective or three times as infectious as the original Wuhan strain to six times as effective. That would mean that it is almost as communicable as measles. From my own experience seeing patients here in Tampa, and talking to colleagues, it does seem to be highly contagious. It's been reported in 48 states and 89 countries, and in lung tissue, it replicates 70 times faster than the old Wuhan strain. I think this plays a large role uh, in its transmissibility and the rapid onset of symptoms. I want to make sure 
which I understand this is both Wuhan and Delta. They both replicated about the same rate. So it's 70 times faster than Wuhan and Delta. How severe is it? That's the big question. In South Africa, we have one set of data, and in the British National Health Service, we have another. Okay? In the British National Health Service, they made the specific statement that infections in Great Britain were every bit as severe as Delta. In South Africa, we have a report that infections are not as severe. To bolster the South African viewpoint, if you will, or data, is that we're having a lower hospitalization rate than we would expect from Delta. So it may well be a milder disease. That would be wonderful. If you were to look at Houston, the president of Houston Methodist put out a very informative document. It's on the internet. And in it, he documented how quickly it spread in Houston. One day it's 32%. Two days later, it's 45%. Two days later, it's 82% of isolates. A rapidly, rapidly spreading pathogen that's pushing out Delta and taking its place. Now, what everyone wants to know is how do I protect myself? I would consider one, if possible, not traveling. It looks like 150 million people are going to be moving around this holiday. That's an awful lot of people. So if it's not necessary, I don't know that I'd make the trip. That's number one. Number two, vaccination. If you want to be protected, get vaccinated and get a booster. Finally, masks and social distancing very much play a role. People separated by six feet and wearing a mask. I cannot emphasize that enough. So for safer gatherings and travel, try to limit travel, and I want you to ask about vaccine status. Some people are already getting rapid test kits and testing people that arrive from out of town. If they're positive, you don't want them in your house because when they leave, everyone will be positive. So these are some pretty good guidelines to keep you safe. Now, are there safer ways to travel? The safest way, if you're going to travel, is going to be in your car. The second safest way is plane. Trains and buses have much different ventilation systems, and by their nature, in my opinion, are not going to be as safe from transmission. I want to thank you very much for taking your time with me and I want to introduce Ms. Milani, who's going to finish up with two or three more comments on how you can be safe. Hello, my name is Alva Milani. I just want to remind everyone the importance of vaccination and protecting yourself and your loved ones, especially during the holiday season. Thank you so much for tuning into our YouTube channel and we we'll hope that you guys will come back and watch more of our educational videos on COVID and other infectious diseases. Thank you.